tell me. What makes a combat species? Their world, their biology, a death world, a world that is harsh to sapient life as we know it, high gravity worlds that can burden the bodies of most species. The very air becomes hard to breathe in, and the stink of low oxy and the weather is so harsh, most sapient life would die, not to mention the local life dangerous and terrifying. Species that were raised on these worlds would evolve hard bones, dense muscles, redundant organs that allow usage in difficult environments, while a garden world where life is wonderful, peaceful, perfect for life of all kinds and are beautiful. They usually have low gravity and high amounts of oxygen, and the weather is always wonderful. Species born here are usually harmless but should not be underestimated unless they pose zero threat to you. Others are considered neutral worlds, where life is relatively harsh but not dangerous. Weather is predictable and oxygen is usually around 40% and gravity around 5 ms2. But we are unique, born on a death world, but with none of the advantages that warrant a garden species born on a death world. An impossibility, right? Well, evolution is a bitch. It just creates a species that can produce a creature able to pass on its genetic code down to its offspring. Our species was at the bottom of the food chain, and we rose up to the top, but not because of evolution, but because we built weapons. However many species build better weapons, we build a better human. Most species are faster and quicker than us, some are stronger than us, some have excellent immune systems and organs, and some are smarter than the average Xeno. But only very, very, very few, if not none, have our level of genetic variation. Probably our most powerful strength is our stress response. Training forms denser bones, running develops better respiratory systems, Injuries cause scars and diseases form better immune systems. While none of these would make us the top dogs, but it is supreasing to most races. When the Shrike found us, we didn't have a prayer of fighting back. We were outclassed on every level, centuries behind on the galactic scale. The only way we were able to make them flee was because of the terror death in which we seeded our world with a bioweapon able to wipe an entire planet within days, if not hours. Genetic diversity ensured some of us would live, enough time given to letting us watch them burn to the ground. Then came the Eradication War, or as you call it, the First Contact War. We fought for years on the Shrike worlds and cities, having to fight with brutal yet efficient tactics to be able to deal with the Shrike's superior tech, numbers, and physical abilities. When it came to void combat, yes, we ran. Our ships at the time couldn't take a hit from the Shrike companies. They boast dozens of times more firepower than our world, but on the surface, we reigned supreme. Surface warfare was the only method in which our species knew how to fight. We spended centuries honing our tactics to ways not thought imaginable. Other species were exploring the void. We spent figuring out ways to wipe the surface clean of our enemies. We were weak, so in response to that we developed exosuits to combat this. Hard alloys that mimic our skeletal structure to perfection, I remember the lines of when I was in the military. When they first developed the really good ones during the end of the eradication war class one common armor class one armor is an exosuit meant to help improve the wielder's strength speed and reaction time these suits will allow the user to control them with neurolinks spread throughout the body to allow zero input delay Life expectancy with these suits are improved by 460% in combat. Design in which the user won't feel the weight, as it is concentrated on the deck with counter-grav tech, allowing extra power production without the drawback of muscle resistance. How much extra power the suit produces depends on the wielder, but on average it improves a human body by three times. The armor is made of titanium steel alloys with polymer ceramics for counter-energy weapons with metal-like flexible polymers for protection in the joints. The specific improvements of a human body are that a user is able to lift three times more than normal, run at speeds on average of 32 km h, 
Reaction times are improved to be at 50 minerals on average, twice as fast as the fastest human reactions possible. Dual piston hydraulic brakes allow extra strength to allow jump, punch, and speed boost in difficult situations. The energy source uses energy redactants originally meant for large weapon batteries for battleships. Human tech allowed the redactants to be massively reduced while maintaining the stable reactions. At full power, it is able to power the suit for four hours and on missions, 40 hours. The power is set on the back of the suit and connected with the deck, allowing the user to feel no weight, allowing long-lasting power during missions. Equipment of the EXO consists of thermal and night vision lenses within the helmet with communication near the ears. A retractable mask allows the wearer to easily take off and put on with relative ease and efficiency. The center mass of the suit carries the battery pack, countergrav, jet packs, and user's main equipment. The arms hold retractable blades that can be used in a moment's notice, and the hands have claws or spikes used to easily kill any enemy in close quarters. The lower armaments can carry sidearms and small med kits and hold mini countergrav, along with the main countergrav pack and jet packs, allows the user to basically fly in high grav worlds and stabilizers in low grav worlds. Artificial magnetic fields are produced in the boats to allow stability in ships when enemy ships have disabled their artificial gravity, or the gravity is lower than we like. The fields can be weaponized to push any creature in a certain radius to allow quick and easy escape. Average cost of suit, 237, 150 old AUD currency. Average weight, 80 kilos on Earth. Amount made, 10 million throughout the eradication war. We were the scourge on the surface, cleansing the cities we came across. We were weak and slow, not a combat species, but with technology we were. We fought on those dirts for years, a single planet of less than eight billion versus a species that was centuries ahead of us and had numbers thousands of times greater than ours. Most didn't think we would win. I did as well, but we humans are just a species that have last resort weapons. And we had a shit ton. We still have their genetic research that wasn't destroyed during their retreat. So we decided to do something that we never wanted to do, since we discovered it. Create the ultimate super soldiers. Now everyone knows what a super soldier is. A pinnacle of biology. Strong, fast, quick, and deadly. Every spacefaring race had tried to produce a super soldier like the Rafarians and Alfians, but all had failed. Their genetic makeup didn't allow very flexible modifications to their biology. However, unlike them, we are very adaptive to many situations and environments on our planet. Our tiny rock, our genetic warriors were born out of desperation and time. The Moors program. They were born out of soldiers who had lost everything and had nothing left to lose. We had no choice. We had to do it. For vengeance. Most terribly died during the experiment. Human biology is very complex in that way. Most either died straight away or lived a few short weeks, pitiful short lives. But we made it work. Harder bones, denser muscles, increased strength, faster speed and longer stamina, rock-hard skin, redefined faster reaction time, better cognitive abilities, heightened senses and overclocked hypermetabolism. We took every biogoical advantage that Earth ever spawned and melded them into our soldiers and pointed them at the enemy. We deleted them from the face of Shai and Intia, slaughtered them to the last single shrike. And when that was done, we returned, lost our purpose and will. Earth was still recovering from the damage that was done. Earth was bleeding and humanity was dying. We didn't have long before we became extinct, and we couldn't fight another war in the same way again. They didn't know. They didn't know of it. They didn't know about it. They didn't know it happened. They didn't know what happened. They didn't know when it happened. They didn't know why it happened. They didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. 
They were scared. Ha 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 ha. Terrified of what Earth has done. But if they had taken a look at our history, they shouldn't be surprised. But they didn't. Humanity was dying and they could not do anything about it. They didn't have the knowledge of the past and try to forge a new future. But the future is already set and as such, inevitable. We had only one choice left. Wipe any history of our planet, our void space, our existence on this universe. For that, scout out any planets habitable for us and only us, live a primitive life and forever hidden from the galaxy. At least until we are once again discovered by greedy races wanting our biology. We would kill them, just like the Shrike. When once again we face oppressive foes, we will launch our weapons of death. Now how does that sound to you? Private Aiden.